Films are made up of sequences. Royale with you. Royale with you. Sequences are made of scenes. And scenes are made up of shots. In previous episodes, we covered composition, camera movement, gear, and depth of field. All of these visual components are directly impacted by the lens a cinematographer chooses. In this episode, we will discuss types of camera lenses and the different effects each one has on visual storytelling. Get in. This is episode seven of The Shot List. Camera lenses. In this episode, we'll be examining the various types of camera lenses. Along the way, we'll be populating these camera lenses in a Studio Binder shot list, which you can download and reference in your upcoming projects. But before we begin, let's go over how a lens works. Light passes into the lens and through different glass shapes called lens elements. These elements slightly bend or refract the light so it lands on a focal point on an image sensor. This is where a picture is created. Every lens is distinguished by its focal length expressed in millimeters, such as a 50 millimeter lens. Some common focal lengths range from the wide 17 millimeter lens to the narrow 200 millimeter lens. However, some lenses have extremely short focal lengths, such as a 4mm fisheye lens, or extremely long focal lengths, such as a 1200 telephoto lens. Now, focal length is simply the distance between the optical center of a lens to the image sensor. The longer the focal length, such as 100mm, the more narrow your angle of view is. The shorter the focal length, such as 24mm, the wider your angle of view. All lenses fall under two categories, prime lenses or zoom lenses. A prime lens has a fixed focal length, while a zoom lens can vary its focal length by adjusting various lens elements. In comparison with zoom lenses, prime lenses have fewer lens elements that can produce sharper images. Their larger apertures also let in more light for low light shots, like Kubrick's iconic candlelit scenes in Barry Lyndon. The larger aperture can also capture a shallower depth of field, which is great for isolating subjects as in The Master. That's a lot to process. Although zoom lenses have smaller apertures, cinematographers can shoot a wide, medium and close-up without changing their lens, saving valuable time on set. For more on how to creatively use the zoom function, make sure to check out our previous episode on camera movement. Ah! Now that we've covered how a lens functions... Thanks, I... Uh... I get it now. <laughs> Let's go over the specific types used by filmmakers and how different lenses can create completely different effects. Let's start with the widest lenses. The extreme wide-angle lens. Extreme wide-angle lenses range between 18 mm to 24 mm. Extreme wide-angle lenses can simultaneously capture close-ups and landscapes in one shot, like in The Revenant. Some lenses have distinct distortion and enter the category of fisheye lenses. 
This scene from The Favourite uses the unnatural perspective of the fisheye lens oh. to underscore the absurdity of these characters. The Queen has decided, Harley. I disagree. A lot. I would like an audience with the Queen where I may state my case. Stage it to me. I love a comedy. Fisheye lenses also exaggerate facial features when used in close proximity. Get in. Like in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, where a fisheye matches the character's distorted and drug-induced perspective. Look at your face. You're about to explode. But what if a filmmaker wants a wide angle of view without the noticeable distortion? They reach for our next lens the wide-angle lens. Wide-angle lenses have a focal length between 24 mm and 35 mm. This is great for capturing wide shots like this shot from Parasite. <laughs> Beyond affecting a shot size, wide-angle lenses also accentuate movement, which is great for trucking through grocery store aisles as in Punch Drunk Love. When used in tight spaces, wide-angle lenses can create distance. Who are they? <laughs> you gonna go beat them up for me? Nice stunt guy. In this scene from Drive, cinematographer Newton Thomas Siegel uses a wide lens to make two characters feel far apart while also making the audience feel more present. Wide-angle lenses are great for influencing the audience's perspective, but they can also create a very stylized look. If a DP wants a more natural look, they might use our next lens. The standard lens. Standard lenses, also called normal lenses, are lenses between 35 mm to 50 mm. The focal length of standard lenses are most similar to how the human eye sees the world. This becomes the ideal choice when cinematographers want a grounded and natural presentation. For example, director Luca Guadagnino's film Call Me By Your Name was entirely shot on a 35 mm lens for this reason. Only one lens, we didn't choose any other lens, so we only shoot with 35 mm. For me to get a sense of human eye and simplicity, I wanted to be straightforward, I didn't want to create technology between the camera and the performance. What does one do around here? Wait for the summer to end. Yeah. What do you do in the winter? Wait for summer to come? Well. We only come here for Christmas and some other vacations. Christmas, I thought, and you, Easter were, as I thought well. you were Jewish. Well, we are Jewish, but also American, Italian, French, somewhat atypical combination. A standard lens helps us feel like we're seeing with our own eyes, allowing us to feel present in the moment and part of the story. It is the opposite effect of our next lens. The telephoto lens. A telephoto lens is any lens with a focal length of 70 mm and up, often referred to as long lenses. Telephoto lenses are typically used for capturing distant subjects, making us feel like we are observing the scene from afar. Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy has surveillance at the core of its story, which motivates a shot like this. The secrecy and voyeuristic qualities of this scene are perfectly communicated with the choice of a telephoto lens. I want to talk about loyalty, Toby. Intelligence has been leaked, Toby. Someone's been taking files from the circus. Unlike wide-angle lenses, telephoto lenses also compress space. Things aren't always what they seem, George. You should know that. This is great for isolating a character in a crowd like in this shot from The Pursuit of Happiness.
Chris Gardner's cathartic moment is amplified and contrasted by the ambivalent crowd around him. While this scene uses a telephoto lens to capture a joyous moment, the graduate uses it to capture desperation. In this scene, Ben is frantically running to stop Elaine's wedding. The telephoto lens compresses the distance and flattens the space, making his running appear desperate and futile. While the last few lenses we've discussed are defined by their focal length, our next two lenses are defined by their focusing abilities. Macro lenses. Macro lenses, sometimes referred to as micro lenses, don't fall within a specific focal range like our previous sections. For instance, you could have an extreme wide-angle macro lens with a focal length of 15 millimeters. Or you could have a telephoto macro lens with a focal length of 200 millimeters. Macro lenses are defined by their ability to capture extreme close-up shots with the sharpest detail. This makes macro lenses perfect for extreme close-up shots. When choosing macro lenses, there are two things that must be considered. Magnification ratio and minimum focusing distance. Macro lenses have a one-to-one -one magnification ratio, meaning the size of the image captured is the same size as in real life. Other macro lenses can have a 5 to 1 magnification ratio, meaning the size of the image captured is five times bigger than real life. In regards to minimum focusing distance, this is simply how close or how far you need to be to your subject to stay in focus. If you're shooting distant subjects such as insects and don't want to cast shadows or scare them off, you'll want to use a macro lens with a longer focal length. If you're able to get up close and personal with your subject and want to include more of the background, you may opt for a macro lens with a shorter focal length. The macro lens can often feel like a magnifying glass hovering over important plot details. And we can't talk about detail without mentioning David Fincher. In Fincher's investigative films like Zodiac and Seven, Macro lens shots are used to magnify clues and details that demand our attention and force us to participate in the film's investigation. While we cannot definitively confirm all of these shots were taken with a macro lens, these are the type of extreme close-up shots that macro lenses are perfect for capturing. Moving on to our final lens, the tilt-shift lens. A normal lens gives a consistent plane of focus. In a tilt-shift lens, however, the lens focus mechanism can be shifted left or right or tilted up and down to manipulate the image. In the movie Game Night, characters are taken on a journey similar to a board game. The game that we're going to play tonight is so epic that we don't need a board and we do not need pieces. Aerial tilt-shift shots are used in the film to create a miniature effect, making houses and large settings appear like set pieces on a board game. In the film The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, cinematographer Roger Deakins wanted to use the blurring effects of a tilt-shift lens. However, he wanted to modify the tilt-shift lens to create a more dreamy, vintage and stylized look that matches many of the photographs taken in that time period. So he teamed up with Otto Nemens International to create the appropriately named Deaconizer Lens, a riff on the tilt-shift lens that also diffracts colors and vignettes the image. The result is a completely unique visual style that echoes the time period of the film. So these are the six types of lenses most commonly used by cinematographers today. Different lenses can capture the same subject in a completely different way. So let's try an experiment by using one of the most common types of scenes in a film, the dialogue scene. Pay attention to each example 
and how the lens choice affects the mood and feel of the scene. We'll start with an extreme wide-angle lens. Look, I'm trying to do something that's important. This is not important. It's important to me. In this scene from Birdman, we can see the extreme wide-angle lens creating a subtle fisheye effect. This is, my God, this is my career. The film was shot entirely on extreme wide-angle lenses. This helped create an intimate and seamless look, while also creating a slight distortion. It's not important, okay? You're not important. Get used to it. Echoing the surrealism of the film. Birdman, the phoenix rises. Now, here's a scene shot with a more standard wide-angle lens. What can I do for you, sir? Uh, well, sir, it's uh, this rug I have. It really tied the room together. Uh, you told Brandt on the phone, he told me. Where do I fit in? In this scene from The Big Lebowski, the wide-angle lens provides a flatter image without any noticeable distortion, perhaps to highlight a more grounded story. Yes, yes. Oh, so you know that they were trying to piss on your rug. Did I urinate on your rug? You mean, did you personally come and pee on my rug? Hello. Do you speak English, sir? Parla usted inglés? I'll ask you again. Did I urinate on your rug? It also creates a bit more distance between our two characters, who are clearly on opposing sides of the issue. The person, come on, man, I'm not trying to scam anybody here, uh, you know. Now let's look at a scene shot with a standard lens. What's the matter? What's bothering you? I'll handle it. I told you I can handle it, I'll handle it. In this scene from The Godfather, you can see how a standard lens brings the characters a bit closer, while still making the audience feel more present. I knew that Santana was gonna have to go through all this. And Fredo, well, Fredo was, well, and I never, I never wanted this for you. It is said that Francis Ford Coppola shot the majority of the film on a standard 40mm lens, perhaps to ensure an unbiased, neutral look into organized crime. <coughs> and finally, an example using a telephoto lens. Captain, relax. Nobody get hurt. No Al-Qaeda here. Just business. We want money. In this scene from Captain Phillips, the use of a telephoto lens captures the tone perfectly. It provides a voyeuristic perspective, as if the audience is hiding like the rest of the crew, trying not to be seen by the Somali pirates. Hey! Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. You like a boy? All of these scenes are standard dialogue scenes. But as you can see, the lens they were shot on makes them all uniquely different. Understanding the unique characteristics of every type of lens will not only help you capture a better shot, but will help you tell a better story. You'll find a link in the description for our free ebook on camera lenses. The lenses we've covered in this video are all spherical lenses. In a separate video, we'll discuss how anamorphic lenses bring an entirely new dimension to lens choice. And in the next episode of The Shot List, we'll explore frame rate and how different frame rates directly affect how an audience experiences a scene. Subscribe, click the bell, and we'll see you again in the next episode.